Do you have an engine hook on the back of your rocket that you want to remove? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today we're going to go through the process of removing the engine hook on the back end of a rocket. Now, why might you want to move, remove this engine hook? Well, say your rocket is set up for a standard D engine and you put it in and it works just fine. But then you have these longer E motors or maybe you want to use an Aerotech composite motor. And when you put those in, it stops right there um, and you can't get the engine all the way in. Well, many people have asked us how do you remove them and so that's what I'm going to cover in this video um, but before we do that I want to ask yourself this question is it worth sacrificing the rocket to make this change because this is major surgery on your rocket and there is the possibility you could ruin the rocket. Now, even if you don't ruin it, it's going to take a lot of time, um, and you might even have to replace the entire engine mount if you're not careful um, and if things go wrong really quick. So you have to ask yourself, is it worth it to remove that engine hook? If it is, that's what I'm going to cover. Now, a lot of times I'll just rebuild the rocket because it is major surgery. So I've made some mock-ups here of what's going on. Um, this is a standard um, engine mount, and you can see you got the engine hook back here. I just pushed that uh, forward thrust ring back up against the tang that's on the engine hook. So you have your aft centering ring, you have another ring possibly inside of that to make sure that this engine hook doesn't slide around like this. Um, and then in front of it, underneath the tang, is a thrust ring and that prevents the engine from, for, the engine from taking this um, engine hook and sometimes this hook can slide in and you can slide it forward. So that prevents that from happening. I've had that on a number of rockets. So here's the process to remove it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of uh, some pliers like this. We're gonna grab the engine hook and we're going to twist it around. So like assuming that wasn't there or that wasn't there, we can take the engine hook and twist it and what, what's going to happen is the tang that goes on the inside, that's going to act like a little knife and it's going to cut the tube right there and eventually we'll, get, we'll be able to snap it out and then we can pull the engine hook out. But what's going to happen is you're going to have a big long gap in there that you're not going to be able to fix very easily. So, but if you take a longer engine and put it in there, it's going to cover up that little slot that you just made. So that's possible. The other thing that you're going to have to do is to remove that thrust ring out of the engine tube. And I covered that in another video and I might get to that here as part of the process. Okay, so now here I've got, I've got two different engine mounts. One has paper rings, one has plywood rings. The process is the same but the one with the plywood rings is going to be a little bit harder. But it doesn't matter. Um, the process is the same. So first thing we want to do, you know, is try it. Try, try twisting it and see if it will. What you're going to do is you're going to break that, this centering ring right here. Um, as you're twisting it around, it's going to make a big gouge in it. Um, if there's another ring in front of that, it's going to, the same thing is going to happen there. Um, what you might want to do, and this is why I got the drill out, is to drill a hole right above that engine hook. So let me, let me drill a hole right here. I'll show you. You see, I also want to try to 
run that drill bit along the engine hook. Since the engine hook is metal, you're not going to hurt it. So try to keep it parallel with the engine hook as you run it through there. And you'll feel it. You'll feel it go through if there's nothing there. You can see now I've actually cleared it. And I can, I can lift it up. And at this point, I would take my pliers, get in there, and twist. And you might have to work it back and forth. You can see it's working its way out. See, I'm, I'm expanding that hole. And now I popped it out. And now I can slide it out of the rocket just like that. Okay, so now let's try this on a real rocket. Uh, the same process would be on the plywood ring. Uh, typically, on a, when you have an engine hook with a plywood ring, there's not a ring on the inside because the plywood is much stronger than the paper one, like this. Okay, so here is a rocket that I'm willing to sacrifice for you. Uh, this one has, um, has a BT-80 on the outside, and then there's on the inside, there's a BT-60, and in that, inside of that BT-60 is the engine mount. That BT-60 runs up through this tube. You can see it right here. Um, and that's what keeps this rocket, you know, staggered like that. It's that one tube that runs through the middle. Um, but the process is the same. I've got my engine hook here. So I have to turn around. Normally I'd do this upside down, but you can't see that. I don't feel anything in there. So now my engine hook. I want to grab it. Okay, I, that worked really nice. Keep twisting it. And then you have to get it past that final lip right here. So now it's out, um, and I got a hole right there, you know, that you saw here on this one here. We've got that hole, and, and it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to fill it. Um, so now let's see if this one has an engine block in it. Okay, it still has an engine block. Um, so now I got to remove that engine block, and this is what I covered in the other video. And for removing the engine block, what we're going to do, um, that engine block, we're going to take our screwdriver and we're going to pound away at it to try to break the glue joint that's holding it into the tube. If we're not able to break the glue joint, we're definitely going to break the paper. Um, and then once we get uh, the paper out, we'll, we'll peel that paper out. Um, and then we're going to sand out the inside of the tube with a dowel wrapped with sandpaper and that will allow us to get back down to the original diameter so we can slide the engine in. Okay, so let me see if I can do this this way. Um, I got a little hammer here. I got part of it out already. I got these little forceps here. I like these. You can get down in there and grab. See, look, I got most of the ring out. Now, it had that green ring on the outside, like this one here. So that green is still on the inside. And to get that out, that's where I have to switch to sanding it. So now I'll just go in there with sandpaper. I can still see some paper on there. I mean, where's my rocket motor? Test it. Okay, so I'm still hitting it. So I still got a little ways to go. Yeah, but you get the point. You got to sand around on the inside to get that out. Now that hole there, um, like I said before, you, you have the option of filling it or not. 
Um, if you want to put an engine retainer on here, sometimes that engine retainer will block that hole and you can, um, and you can ignore it after that. If you do want to fill it, um, I would recommend taking some epoxy clay. This is the Bond-Aid clay that way we have here at Apogee. Let me cut off a little piece and I'll show you how to do it. I always wear gloves when I do this stuff. Um, it's a two-part mix and you can see the two parts are already in there. Um, so I'm just going to cut off a little sliver. And on the back side it has little piece of plastic. Just un take that off and then you just start kneading it. And I don't want to touch it with my bare hands but you get the point. You'll knead it like this. And this Bond-Aid will be hard in five minutes. Um, we have another clay called the Fix-It clay and it's a full 24 hours so if you need more working time use that. Um, but if you want to do a quick re repair, um, the Bond-Aid, I like it a lot uh, because it goes really fast. So then you'll take a little piece and you'll find that hole. Let me, let me show you on this one here. You'll find that hole and you just smash it in there like that. And that will cover it. Now you're not going to be able to do anything about that slot right there, um, but as like I said before, your motor will cover that slot from the inside. Oof, this one ha this one also has a center ring in it, um, which I haven't removed, so that's why this didn't go in. Uh, but once you get that out, this will go in, and then everything will be hunky dory. Um, you can try to smooth this out as much as you can to try to make it smooth. Um, it's going to be a little bit hard to sand it. Um, but if you can, while it's still soft, you can try to um, mold it as smooth as possible. Um, and it's all pretty much cosmetic at this point anyway, as long as you got that engine hook out. So that is the process of taking the engine hook out. If you mess up, um, what you'll do is you'd have to pull the whole engine mount out. Um, again, that's kind of like taking out that thrust ring where you're going to smash it out and then smash out the other ring on the front, pull the whole thing out, sand it down, and then take a new engine mount and slide it in. Um, that's kind of like the next worst situation, but then sometimes if, if you do anything to this outside tube, you know, it's game over then. Then it's, then it's replacing the rocket. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, my name again is Tim Van Milligan. You're watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, and may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.